everybody. Welcome to another episode of Bridge to the Past, where we walk you through important visuals that help tell the story of American history. I'm your host, Mary Patterson, and I'm really excited to be back with you for this episode because you are getting a two for one special. Not only are we going to be looking at two historic images, but you have two BRI staff members guiding you through this visual journey. So I'm excited to introduce you to my colleague, Joshua Schmidt. Hey, Josh. Hey, Mary. It's great to be here with you. Yeah, I'm really excited that you're here because in today's um, episode, we're really going to be keeping the idea of perspective or point of view in the back of our head. So just the idea that different um, different people can interpret the same event or the same thing in different ways. And there are lots of things that can color your perspective or your point of view, like um, the time in which you're living, where you live, your age, your family, your, you know, your religion, your education, all these things sort of play into it. So we're going to try to keep those things in mind as we look at our images. So today, as I said, we are going to look at two images coming from the same period in time and dealing with the same topic, but they are from two different perspectives. So without further ado, here we go. Taxation without representation, American versus British perspectives. All right, so here is our first image. And if you remember from our last episode, we said the first thing that you should always do when you encounter an image is to just look and observe and take those observations and try to make questions. So I see I have a title, Stamp Master in Effigy, and this is from 1765. Now, even just looking at the title, I'm not sure what a stamp master is, but it sounds pretty cool. And I'm not really sure what an effigy is. So those might be two, two questions right off the bat before I even look at the image. And if I'm looking at the image, I notice that it, it's black and white. Um, it's not super high quality, but I can tell there's a large group of, it looks like just men. And I'm, you know, from the way they're dressed, they have sort of breeches and coats on. And they're outside, looks like in the street. And there's a crowd of them and they're waving hats and there's a guy on a pole. So who is this guy and why is he on a pole? And are the spectators like, are they cheering him? Are they raising him in the air? Are they mad at him? I don't really know what's going on there. And it also looks like there is a coffin in the left side of the screen. So I'm wondering is this a funeral? Like, why would a coffin be there? But usually funerals, I don't know, I always think of them, again, my perspective is that they're sort of quiet and solemn, and this doesn't really look like that. So I made some observations, and I definitely have some questions, like, what is a stamp master, and what is an effigy? And then what's going on with this crowd? So what is this occasion? Who's on the pole? Are they happy? Are they upset? And again, what's, what's going on with the coffin? Did somebody die? I don't know. So I have all these questions from looking at this image. And I also know that I really need some more context to interpret this image. So Josh, here's where I'm hoping that you can really help me out here. Yeah. So just a little background. Um, the French and Indian War ended in 1763. And the British um, and the colonists fought together side by side. Um, and while they won the war, they also ended up with a lot of debt. And so Parliament, in response to that debt, decides to raise revenue. Um, and one of the acts that they pass in 1765 is called the Stamp Act. Um, the Stamp Act was controversial from the beginning because it violated uh, from the colonist perspective, the British common law tradition of the colonists being able to tax themselves directly. So while the British uh, had taxed um, things like goods and uh, things like that, they had never directly imposed a tax um, on the colonists. And the Stamp Act did this. It stated that any paper good, um, playing cards, newspapers, wills, anything with paper on it basically needed a stamp on it. And in order to get that stamp, you need to pay a tax. So the colonists 
uh, for a variety of reasons, were very unhappy with this. They had both constitutional issues with it, um, as I mentioned with the, the tax history of Britain, um, but also just practical reasons. This was, for many, especially the lower class, an unbearable tax. So I think we can start to get a picture of what's going on here. So a stamp master, as mentioned in the cartoon, was a British appointed official in charge of collecting the stamp tax. And in effigy was a um, kind of a symbolic figure of a hated person, um, usually destroyed or paraded around in a act of disapproval um, that was, it's common throughout history, but it was especially used during this time period in the American colonies to showcase disapproval with British authority. Okay, so this this guy on the pole is the stamp master. He's the guy that has that would collect the taxes on all of these paper goods. So anything with paper, and again, in the 1760s, right? There's everything is everything important is on paper. There's no such thing as computer screens and things like that. People aren't going paperless. So he's the guy you got to pay. He's not too popular, and it's his effigy, his likeness that's up on this pole because he is hated. They don't like this guy starting to make sense. And the coffin then, so you mentioned this idea of common law or this idea that there's always been this tradition of having a voice in what happens to you. So having taxation with representation, but it sounds like the Stamp Act is different and the colonists weren't getting that. So perhaps the coffin is, I don't know, maybe it's liberty, maybe it's common law, something has died. Right. Yeah. So that's actually, there's a great anecdote throughout this entire um, time period where the, some colonists, I think this actually happened in a couple areas where um, colonists staged mock funerals mm -hmm. for liberty writ large, like the concept of liberty. Um, and they, they paraded around a coffin uh, with liberty in it because it had died with the passage of the Stamp Act. So my guess is that that's a reference to this here in this cartoon. Okay, so now things are starting to make sense. So that is actually what is happening here. So we see the giveaway here on this particular image. It says New Hampshire at the top. So this is from the colonial perspective. This appeared in a newspaper in New Hampshire. And the day that the Stamp Act went into effect in Portsmouth, which from its name, Portsmouth, right, very important town for trade at the mouth of the river, they stage a mock funeral. So that's what's going on here. So this is a print that's kind of sympathetic to the colonist perspective that the Stamp Act is really, you know, it's hated because um, it's, it's a funeral and they're trying to, you're clearly expressing displeasure with the Stamp Master. And scenes like this, like you said, are happening throughout the colonies. So it's not just in New Hampshire, it's not just in Boston, but throughout the 13 colonies, colonists are lighting bonfires, they're burning effigies of these stamp masters, they're attacking homes and properties of crown officials, so they're clearly expressing their displeasure. And what ends up happening because of all of these protests is that a Stamp Act Congress is called in New York City. And at that Congress, it's decided, you know, we're just gonna boycott. So we're not gonna buy anything that needs a stamp. So this would be a pretty big deal because you said this is on everything containing paper. So almanacs, wills, any dice, even dice, um, playing cards. So they're not going to, you know, they're gonna avoid having to pay the tax. And this is also going to lead to British merchants feeling the pinch, like, hey, I'm not getting my money here. They're not buying my paper. They're not buying my cards, whatever. So Parliament will rescind. They take away the Stamp Act. But, and I love this, the very same day, Parliament passes the Declaratory Act, which basically, which says that it has the right to legislate for the colonies, quote, in all cases whatsoever. So it's almost like you know, this is, I'm imagining Parliament saying, fine, we'll take the Stamp Act away. You're so upset about it. But there was nothing wrong with it to begin with. So it's almost like, did this fix things? Are things going to get better? 
I don't know. But that brings us to our second source, the Bostonians paying the excise man or tarring and feathering. So Josh, what do you, what do you think? What do you observe when you look at this? Yeah, so at first glance, it looks like we have a couple of groups of people doing very different things, it looks like. Um, we have this group of rather nefarious looking men pouring something down the throat of another man. Um, and then in the background, we have a group of other men dumping something off the side of a boat. And then we also have a liberty tree, uh, which I'm not sure what that would be, with a noose hung on it. And there's a piece of paper nailed to that tree that says Stamp Act, but it's upside down. Mm. Um, and then in the foreground, we also have, it looks like a cap um, and a bucket also sitting there. So I'd assume that's also important. And this cartoon is labeled the Bostonians paying the excise man. Um, so maybe we can, if we get some context, we can uh, figure out what's going on here. Yeah. So again, when we were looking and we we're thinking about historical images, this is pre Instagram. We're always taking pictures. Like we have so many pictures in our phones, like all the time. They didn't have any of that technology. So to have a picture and to reproduce a picture, everything in there is very purposefully done. So that cap isn't just randomly there. It must mean something. So let's try to get some context to answer some of these questions. So this is, so this source, it's nine years, eight, nine years prior to after our previous source. So the Stamp Act has been repealed. So when you see the Stamp Act upside down on that Liberty Tree, so that has been taken away, but the British Parliament has passed other acts that lead to taxes on the colonies. Remember that declaratory act? They said, I'm taking away your Stamp Act, but we're still gonna tax you. So there were the Township Acts and then the Tea Act was passed in 1773. So this is a tax on tea. And like the Stamp Act, right, we have this precedent of colonial resistance and opposition to these taxes, which from their perspective, they don't have a voice in parliament. They're not electing someone and sending them over to London to meet. So they object based on their you know, traditions as Englishmen to these taxes. So the colonists, right, they, they successfully protested and put pressure on parliament before to pull the Stamp Act away. So this sort of resistance is just sort of intensifying. And tarring and feathering is really, it's pretty, like you hear, you say that, but to think about what that actually means. So in this picture, you have four American colonists, and this is specifically Bostonians, tarring and feathering the excise man, the tax man. So we've gone beyond putting an effigy, a dummy of someone on a pole and like to say, you know, we're mad at you. This is actually taking that human being stripping him down like stripping him publicly pouring hot tar so you have this bucket in the left corner that will hold, probably hold the tar and then dumping feathers on him i mean that's it's really horrifying I and mean, it could suffer really bad burns and your you know your skin can't breathe with the tar on it and it's it's humiliation and it's a public warning like we're not paying your tax so it's really quite brutal and they're also they're forcing it tea down his throat because it's a reference to the tea act so if you think of drinking a beverage that's too hot which is me anytime i go to starbucks or any other place i burn my tongue but this is like four guys ganging up on you and pouring a hot beverage down your throat so kind of scary stuff and then this the the tree in the background so the liberty tree is referencing a specific tree in Boston where protesters would gather before they went out to, you know, protest in some way. So that's a reference to the Liberty Tree. And by putting a noose on it, it seems like, you know, the artist is trying to uh, say that the Liberty Tree isn't really a good thing because a noose is where you would be hung, it's where you would die. And then the guys in the background, 
right? This is a reference to the Boston Tea Party. So this print is depicting a tarring and feathering of a taxman in Boston that took place in January of 1774. The Boston Tea Party took place in December of 1773. So that is when, again, it, to protest this, this tax on tea, the colonists dressed up as um, Mohawk Indians and dumped 90,000 pounds of tea. So that's, that's a lot of tea. <laughs> I wonder what the water was like after all that tea went in there into the harbor. So that was a really big, like, screw you parliament for this tax, right? Where they're threatening, they're humiliating um, the excise man, but they've also like destroyed this property. They're dumping the tea into the water. So I think we've answered most of the questions that Josh had. So this is someone, right, they don't want to pay the tax. Rather than pay the tax, they're actually, you know, attacking and harming the excise man. And it's all because of this idea of, you know, taxation without representation. And I'm going to ask you, Josh, so, well, we kind of gave it away. I think I gave it away already, so I can't ask you this, but this is from the, this is a British print, and this is the British perspective. This isn't really portraying the Bostonians and their acts of protests in a positive light. It's almost like he's saying, they're out of hand. If you look at the faces on the four Bostonians in the foreground that are you know, tar in the middle of tarring and feathering the sky, they look kind of crazy. Like if I saw someone if I saw these guys, I would go the other way across the street because I don't want to encounter them. So they, it's the same concept, but it's looking at it from, you know, I don't understand what the problem is with these colonists. We're just asking them to pay taxes. It's for their benefit. But from the American perspective, they're taking it a different way. Like We don't have a voice in setting these taxes, so we're not going to pay it and we're going to protest it. So... If you haven't guessed already, <laughs> things are escalating between the American colonies and Great Britain. So as a result of the Boston Tea Party, something called the Coercive Acts are passed in 1774. And these are pretty draconian or pretty harsh. So Boston Harbor was closed, right? And Boston's, a lot of its livelihood is dependent on trade. So it's really hurting and punishing Boston. Town meetings have been banned, so this right to assemble has been taken away. British officials could be tried in Britain for capital crimes. So this idea of a trial by jury, again, this, I, this is one of these rights of Englishmen that, Josh, that you alluded to, along with this idea of common law, is, is, is being tampered with. Like, instead of having a jury in the colonies where you committed a crime, you're going to be shipped back to Britain for your case, and that's not going to be really a fair trial. And soldiers, British soldiers, can be quartered or housed in civilian houses. So all of these measures were part of the coercive acts, and the colonists start referring to them as the intolerable acts. Like, they just, this is just like a step too far. So trouble is brewing, things aren't getting better, and war is coming. So again, when you're looking at a historical image, there's so just looking will lead to questions and then looking into context and all these details that comes together and it can really shed light on what's going on in the past. So, and it's also important to consider perspective, right? Because it's understanding that different people would interpret an event in different ways can be really helpful, not only when we're thinking about past, but also in the present day to try to acknowledge, okay, you don't see things the way I do. I wonder why that might be. Josh, thank you so much for looking at these images with me. I hope everybody learned something. If you did learn something, make sure to like the video and come back for more close readings for art across U.S. history. See you later. Bye. Thanks, Mary.